Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be giving you guys my top 5 tips for cavalry players in Age of Empires 2. So let's hop right in and check it out. I made a video last week for my top 5 tips for archer players. If you guys didn't check that out yet, I'll leave a link below in the description. You guys can check it out before or after watching this. It's really up to you. And uh, hopefully you'll learn something if you're an archer player in that video. And in this video, I'm going to be covering cavalry tips. So it's my top 5 tips for cavalry players. This will cover stuff like scout cavalry in early game, like in feudal age. Also will cover knights and light calves in the castle age. We'll maybe touch a little bit about camels and battle elephants and when to use those. And then I'll also cover hussar raiding in late game because I think that's a really important thing to understand in today's meta. Alright, so hopping right into the list now at number 5, we're going to start nice and basic as always. So I will be going over the upgrades and which ones are the most beneficial for your cavalry. Right off the bat, you need to understand that armor upgrades on cavalry are insanely important. Not just for the melee armor, which is nice, taking less damage from melee units, but also and most importantly from pierce damage, you take less damage because it's very important when you're raiding, when you're up against a big ball of archers to take less damage from their projectiles because simply put, there's way more projectiles attacking you than there is you attacking enemy things. So in general, getting arm upgrades is much better than getting attack upgrades when it comes to cavalry. And this is especially against archer units but it's also really useful when talking about raiding through town centers. Keep in mind when you're running into an enemy base, even if they have no army whatsoever in terms of range army, like no expos, no cav archers, they're still gonna have their town center that shoots arrows. Any towers they have will shoot arrows. Their castle will shoot arrows. And so right off the bat, any defensive structure will do a lot of damage to you if you don't have any pierce armor. So in general, you wanna prioritize your armor upgrades from the blacksmith and not your attack upgrades. Let me give you an example just to really hit home this kind of idea. If you're up against 40 crossbows and you don't have any armor upgrade whatsoever, those crossbows will do five damage each per shot and so your knights will be getting easily one tapped and you're trying to close the distance but if you're getting one shot the front knight will die every single time every time the archers take a shot and so you're never really going to be able to get a surround on those archers and so even if you do more damage because you got both attack upgrades you're not even going to be able to hit those archers in the first place and so your upgrades are going to be pretty much worthless and you're going to wish you watched this video and got the armor upgrades instead in melee combat so knights versus knights it doesn't really matter which one you get so i'd recommend getting one arm upgrade and then one attack upgrade because that's the best way to be cost efficient because the second upgrade from each line is more expensive to just get one and one when up against cavalry but when up against archers at all definitely prioritize armor first it's not only that for upgrades though we're going to talk a little bit about husbandry and bloodlines general rule for bloodlines do not go all in scouts and feudal age if your civilization does not have bloodlines however if you don't have bloodlines you can still go for some knights in castle age i would recommend only making a few knights and using them to raid or to snipe some siege or as utility i highly recommend not going all in into cavalry if you don't have bloodlines unless you're burgundians of course because generally speaking knights with 20 less hp so only at 100 hp are not going to be a great unit as the game goes on so only commit to a lot of cavalry if you have bloodlines it's such an essential technology i usually would recommend you get bloodlines on the way up to castle age if you want to go for some knights or if you have heavy scouts in feudal age picking up bloodlines in feudal age for your scouts can be a really good way to put extra pressure in late feudal age and catch your opponent off guard it's also a really good way to take engagements versus mass archers in feudal age if you get armor and bloodlines because that makes your scouts the best unit in feudal age, individually speaking. All right, now when it comes to husbandry, I'm gonna give you guys a nice tip right off the bat. Husbandry is almost never bad. Like think about the application that you get from moving faster. You get to chase down enemy knights that don't have husbandry. You get to run away from enemy units and even camels and cav archers, you'll be able to be more efficient at running away. Also, you can kite away from pikemen. If you're in a big fight, you can hit with the knights and then run away the low HP ones. And if you have husbandry, it's gonna be easier to do it. If you're up against monks and you have husbandry, you can easily run away from their conversion range. There's really no time where husbandry is a bad technology. So I would just say get husbandry as soon as possible, pretty much every single time. A good rule is just to make a couple knights in castle age, make maybe two rotations from two stables, and then simply pick up husbandry right after. You won't regret it and it's only 150 food. All right, so at tip number four here, we've already covered a little bit about the upgrades. Let's talk about what you should actually do when you get your knights on the field. And that is use your mobility. Mobility is a key factor when making cavalry work. And it's one of the reasons why cavalry is such a strong tool in this game. And so what I would recommend is to get into the habit of never taking a fight in which you're not favorable. You always have the option to run away. It's borderline overpowered to have this ability in a unit to always be able to pick and choose your battles. Obviously there will be some cases where you're gonna be forced to take a fight or else your economy will take a hit. 
But generally speaking, if you're in the middle of the map, only take engagements that favor you. If you're not sure, take it and find out. But if you're sure it's a bad fight or you're hesitant, just back up and wait for a better one or make your opportunity by going around and raiding your opponent's base instead. I will also touch a little bit more about late game in this particular tip because mobility, especially with Hussars, is incredibly important. You can go up against Halberdier with Hussars because in late game, you never have to fight those Halberdier. If Halberdier are engaging at you, you just run away and go raid the economy every single time. If your opponent is fully walled, you get to use some siege to break the walls, send the Hussars in and absolutely disrupt the economy. In late game, one Hussar, killing one villager is absolutely worth it. It's 80 food and it's trading versus 50 food base cost of the villager, plus the fact that your opponent now has to remake the villager and all the idle time that you get from him having to garrison all his villagers when you go in for the raid. Furthermore, you make him have to react to your raid, so he's now forced to send his slow army to the back of his base, throwing him off guard and kind of making the game a lot more messy for him to be able to execute his own game plan. Raiding is such an important part of this game and mobility lets you do it with ease. So make sure you're using mobility at all stages of the game and never take a bad fight when you don't have to. All right, moving on to number three, this is now getting into the very practical tips for most games that you're gonna play cavalry. And this is just to mix in monks for a few reasons. Monks are insanely good with cavalry. I can't stress it enough. It's like burger and fries, guys. You don't go ahead and get one without the other. You need to have both to enjoy a good meal. And in this case, monks and cavalry go hand in hand. You need to have both. And it's very practical to get both because a monastery is a very small investment. 175 wood lets you make monks for 100 gold. No upgrades needed most of the time. And also a monastery is just a building that you need to click up to Imperial Age. So it's almost never a bad investment to go into it. And the idea with the monks is it does three things. It lets you convert enemy units. So it's an aggressive unit. It lets you pick up relics, which should be very possible since you have map control and castleage with knights. Most of the time, because of your mobility, you should be able to pick up a couple of relics at least. And you also get a defensive tool, which is to heal up your knights. Guys, knights are a very expensive unit and cavalry in general. This goes with elephants and camels as well. They're a very expensive unit. So we don't want to be throwing them away for free. Furthermore, they have a lot of HP. So what we could do is fight with our army, raid our opponent, whatever it may be. And when our knights get really low on HP, we simply drag them back home. Even if they have a one HP left from a raid or from a battle, you bring the knight home, you heal them up, and that one HP knight can go all the way back up to 120 HP. And that's like making a whole other knight pretty much. And so there could be multiple cases in games where you take big battles with knights. You have 10 or 15 knights that are half HP, very low HP. And then with just three or four monks, you can heal them back in like a minute or two. And you have a full HP, big army of knights up and your opponent has to deal with another battle very soon and they might not have that luxury if they didn't heal up their units. So it's very, very strong tool to use your monks to heal low HP units and it's especially oppressive when you're raiding with a few knights, they get low, you send them back. Meanwhile, while they're healing, you send another batch of fresh knights to your opponent's base. So they have to constantly deal with knights in their base, but you don't lose any because you do damage, you bring them home, heal them up and send them again when they're fresh. It's such a nice way to play with cavalry and it's almost impossible possible for your opponent to counterplay this trick unless they're like purposely hitting your low HP knights and making sure they kill them before you're able to escape with them on low HP and heal them up. So always make sure to mix in monks, you get so much value out of them and you can never really go wrong. All right, so moving on to number two, I have another tip that's very similar to number three with the monks. This time it's gonna be with Siege. I see a lot of players start out with Knights and Castleage, but then kind of collapse as soon as the opponent gets any kind of pike or big massive crossbows on the field. And I'm thinking to myself, if you're a Knight player, you have to go with Siege to be able to complement your Knights. This does a few things. Number one, and most importantly, it defends you against big balls of crossbows that your opponent will naturally have in Castleage. Why, you might ask? Well, simply they can mass archers starting in Feudal Age. And so by the time they get the crossbows and Castleage, they already have a big mass set up. You, on the other hand, as a knight player, can only start massing knights once you're already in castleage. So you always have to account for the fact that your opponent will have more military out on the field. Mixing in siege as soon as you get the castleage or midway through, whenever really you need it, is a great way to deal with these big balls of crossbow without having to right away jump in with your knights and take an inefficient trade. Siege also helps you deal with pikes because scorpions and mangonels, if you know how to use the attack round hotkey that is, is a great way at dealing with mass infantry. And this is why I always say that pikes do not counter knights knights in most cases and it's a very hot take-ish so feel free to disagree if you think differently but trust me on this guys pikes especially early on in castleage will get absolutely shredded by siege if a player knows how to make use of them so always mix in scorpions and mangonels would do the trick to counter crossbow and pike compositions but that's not the only thing that siege can do siege can do the thing it's really meant to do which is to actually push bases and break buildings and this is really an effective strategy to use with the knights for a few reasons one because you have the strongest unit in castleage 
village like individually the knight is extremely strong and so going with siege just lets your composition be extremely powerful and difficult for your opponent to take out if you're able to put pressure and use the knights to hit buildings because they do a lot of damage to buildings naturally and then also bring in some mangonels or some rams to also take out buildings you can crush your opponent's base in castlage and you don't just have to wait till imperial age to end the game this is one thing i really love about knights you have that kill threat nice and early from the start of the game it makes it a lot more interesting and a lot more dynamic and the games can end quite early if your opponent isn't careful and doesn't respect you Alright, before I show you guys the number one tip on the list, I want to give you guys a bonus tip because this is very important, but it's something that a lot of people already know, but just in case you don't know it, it's this. The general rule in Feudal Age, guys, is that three scouts can cost-effectively kill a spearman. The rule is three scouts per spear. If your opponent has one spear at a wood line, you have three scouts, hit the spear, your scout should take two shots and that's it, so your scout should survive, no scout should be dead, and then you can use those three scouts, one being low HP, to try to harass the villagers. If your opponent has two spears, you just have to bring in six scouts and you should be fine. The 3 to 1 ratio is a really important rule to know in Feudal Age and it's something that helps you get more damage with your scout rush. All right, finally, moving on to tip number one here. This is, of course, going to be to know the counters to the things that counter your knights. Obviously, if you go knights, there are three main counters that the enemy will go for. We need to know how to react to deal with each one of these options. The first one is the most obvious, which is going to be pikemen. Now, as I've already stated, pikes in early castle age are not a big threat. You have the mobility advantage over them, so you can simply run around them, and you can mix in siege and monks to help deal with pikes in low numbers. But the issue becomes when pikes get in big numbers or in late game when halberdier becomes a threat, so in that case, we need to mix in a unit with the knight. The best unit, in my opinion, to help deal with pikemen is to simply go lead skirmisher. It's a unit that doesn't cost any gold, so it's very easy to afford alongside the knights. And it also has a little bit of a bonus against the pikemen. So a lead skirmisher does a great job at thinning out the pikes and letting you take a big engagement with the knights. You'll also have the choice to simply fight the pikes head on and then run away the low HP knights to go back and heal them with the monks. But of course, this takes a little bit more micro and might not be a suitable counter once the pikes get very high numbers. The next unit that people will go for to counter your knights is the monk. It's a very effective unit because one monk getting one conversion on a knight is a cost-effective trade, a very cost-effective trade in fact, because they're trading 100 gold to not only kill your unit that costs 60 plus 75 resources, but they actually bring it over to their side. So it's an incredibly cost-efficient trade for one monk to get one conversion, and even if it dies after, it's considered worth it every single time. And so to counter monks, what you should definitely go for most of the time is to just mix in some light cavalry alongside your knights. Use your knights to do everything else you want to do with them, but then use like 3, 4, even up to like 10 light cavalry to run in from a flank and try to snipe the monks in the back of their army. If you're able to kill their monks and also flank the enemy army, those light cavalry will have incredible value and it's going to be very worth it. Light cavs have an anti-resistant bonus, so monks can't convert them as easily. In fact, it takes a lot longer to convert a light cav than a knight, so it's naturally an amazing counter. And lastly, we have the camel. If they go for camels to counter your knights, you have a couple options. You can either go camel yourself if you have camel as your civilization, but most knight civilizations will not have camel camels available. So what should you do in that case? Well, in low numbers, you should go for monks to counter camels. It's very simple. Monks counter knights and camels alike. So if they've got camels, just use knights and monks for yourself and you should be totally fine. Also, camel is a soft counter to knights, so it's not going to absolutely destroy you in a one-on-one -on -one battle. Yes, a camel will win one-on-one -on -one versus a knight, but it's left with very little HP as well. So it's not like it completely destroys you. And if you just have a couple more knights in the low number fights, like eight knights versus six camels, you're going to win those trades and you're going to be in a good position. So never, never respect camels too much when they're low in number. However, when the camels start to get high up, like 25 versus 30, they're going to start to shred your knights in big numbers because of their high damage output. I'd recommend in this case that you switch to pikes to have knights and pikes mixed in to help deal with the camels. It's not reasonable to rely on monks only in high numbers because we're all human and it's very hard to micro 10, 15, 20 monks at a time so that they all get a conversion. It's simply not realistic. All right, so that's gonna do it for my top five tips for cavalry players in Age of Empires 2. Hopefully you guys learned something today with some of these tips and hopefully I've shined a new light on how to play with cavalry and what to do against some of the situations that often come up. I personally love playing with mobile units and cavalry is one of my favorite units to play with, like cap and knight alike. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, peace, and stay safe.